The world knows when mainstream media laid their eyes for the first time a Trump rally and coincidentally catching the moment he escaped assassination by a whisker. Both the Quran and the Vedic text know the history moraling everything happens for a reason. Here's why. Within the 700 verse Srimad Bhagavad Gita 11.3, Krishna reveals himself as the Paramishvara, meaning supreme knower who controls nature and the individual soul called Atma. Once we accept everything that happens, the faster we get out to our destination. As long as we don't dwell on what we may perceive as being negative at that time, everything is a reaction to our actions of free will, but divine will is above us all. So whether Krishna places Trump to be alive or not, that's for Krishna to decide. World leaders condemned the attack while their opposition's gonna hate. 2. In Srimad Bhagavata Mahapurana 3.29.36, Krishna is Parama Atmana, shortened to Paramatma, meaning the super soul in everyone's heart. He manifests according to our devotion. So is obscure in a rock, vibrating of atoms, but very apparent in a holy person, giving decisions before questions are asked, as found by neurological experiments. Paramatma is the one who told Trump to move his head at the right split second, and is also the one who told the shooter to shoot. But of course, the latter, whether trained or a patsy, lived by the sword, so died by the sword. Trump has clearly had good karma in his past life or lives, Opportuned this life to lead many affluent but many effluentful people, a double-edged sword that currently has a major effect on the whole world at current time. All material opulence is owned by Krishna's Kubara's form, and again it's the free will for humans to choose what guna, meaning law of nature, they want to attract, namely Tama, darkness, Raja, passion, or Sattva, goodness. 3. Those gunners have growing subdivisions for when a person chooses a balance or choosing goodness all the way, that being the only choice that has a positive effect of happiness and the only way that will help transcend all gunners for spiritual moksha, enlightenment or ultimate liberation, depending on the translation of the faith you choose. All under the umbrella term of Sanatana Dharma, the eternal duty for people. It is publicly known with ultra-limited details that this is Trump's fourth assassination attempt on him. It just so happened that a photographer set his camera to record at 8,000 frames per second, enough to see divine intervention at play. Both the shadow and gleam of two of the many bullets that whizzed past and threw Trump's outer ear. It is not a question that there should never have existed a gun in the first place, as Americans have chose to bring war upon themselves by the reactions of making enslaved animals suffer. Having no power to rejuvenate animals during a fire ceremony, being one type of yagna. Likewise, the contrary good doesn't really exist on the material platform, but there is really goodness on a higher spiritual level. A better way to explain this philosophy is devotion versus forgetting to be a devotee. Krishna gives us the free will to do what we want, but there is a negative karmic reaction if we follow a lower nature. Krishna implements that forgetfulness, and those choosers can spiral downward, slowing their final destination, usually over countless lifetimes. Contrarily, devout people hasten their great destination, which is never to reincarnate again, breaking the life-death cycle of samsara, so no longer swim in the material suffering. Krishna is indifferent to everyone, loving everyone indifferently, However, he is very, very fond of his devotees. I'm not saying Trump is a devotee this lifetime. Trump acts like a kshatriya or warrior after coming from a Vaishya or business background which was construction industry. Certainly a leader of. Near-death experiences often change people for the better and if there has to be a foretold 10,000 years of golden age, then it has to come at all odds. No matter how long away those cogs have to be set in motion, in Sanatana Dharma, there are many divinities that can intervene. Lord Ganesh, for example, to lift obstacles, Goddess Lakshmi for good luck, or Shiva, the master of all material energy. Some faiths hold five gods as supreme. Few focus on Brahma in this era, but many in this age prefer Durga Devi's form of Kali, not Mr. Kali of this corrupted era, but the female Kali Ma, known as Time. 
From my own knowledge, I know about Krishna, who personally says he is inexhaustible time itself, three times over both of the sources I gave in number one and two. When Krishna wants to intervene in some way, there is no stopping his will. So it's not Trump that can purposefully dodge bullets, but his Christian faith will help him with that. The Christian faith has more answers to explain this. Due to 100 times more Vedic manuscripts than all Greek and Latin ones put together, ballistic analysts, top-grade snipers and reenactors all give their testament that it's a miracle Trump survived. The media once said that the 5 miles per hour wind pushed the bullet away from its fatal target. That would mean Lord Vayu the wind helped. But it turns out the type of bullet from its distance and AR-15 rifle ignores that wind. Christians use the hand of God working in mysterious ways, but Christians know when positive changes are about to unfold. Just don't necessarily hold your breath though. Although Krishna's one exhalation alone covers a minimum of hundreds of trillions of human years, the true end is nigh scenario is limited to 427,000 years more. But then it gets four times better for four times longer in Satya Yuga. 4. In Shastric government, a divine leader called Amanu rules mankind for about 307 million years each, a time span seen geologically as one plate tectonic contraction, then another Manu for its total separation. There are always 14 such Manus, expeditors of progenation of humans, per day of Brahma. So after the 14th Manu was a restart with Manu number 1, called Svayambhuva Manu, because he was born without two parents, manifesting from Svayambhuva Brahma, the same from Krishna Mahavishnu's form alone. The first Manu this cycle seemed to have more responsibility than other Manus, ruling three worlds, meaning earth, the underworld, as well as the spiritual sky, and it's his law passed down from countless generations that is still used today in the form of the Hammurabi Codex, Code of Manu, and therefore the British and other world law. We can count he invoked his way of rulership 1.97 billion years ago, a little older than the 17 natural nuclear reactors found on the Gabon-Congolese border, and uniquely, his Manu Smriti, Book of Law, for the rulers of that age, still holds today not overwritten by any more recent Manus. Just plagiarised and often mistranslated, really. Most of it regulates how Rajas, or kings, should rule. But was a time when a Kshatriya king or warrior had the power to let it rain only at night. Even the meniscus measurement could be forecasted per week. He would never relish in festivals unless, firstly, all his protected civilians were happy, meaning they were covered with the basics of water, food and shelter. Energy was of course sustainable and there existed an unbroken water cycle using yagnas, the only way to provide grain and therefore birth of life. Often those kings would choose to be pious, travelling to the mountains for super long meditations, yet way beyond our current longevity. The system still ran perfectly with only 25% of businessmen profit. If no profit, there was no tax. A further half of whatever was received aided religion, and the king was always advised by a team of learned Brahmins. It is joked that modern Belgium ran better with its 500 days plus with no government, but Kruta Yoga governing had a true one-world government with 100% religion and happiness. Now we are at 25% as the four-quarter ages descend. As it descends, scripture foretold for its time, the end of the true monarchies, the Sun Dynasty and the Moon Dynasty. The diminishingly powered kings list who would be usurped after World War Zero that took place at Kurukshetra, followed by the leaving of Krishna's material body called the Mausi Lila pastime. Krishna left in 3102 BC at age 125 so that this Kali Yuga era could start, as it always cyclically does and it is even empirically backed by 11,400 eclipse readings and accepted mathematical print by Aryabhata I, plus world archaeology after the war, changing from Vedic cremation to Umlechka burial. 
Even Darwin saw devolution of bivalves over time before Victorian editors jumped on one of his late ponderings of the single word evolution. We know by past eras that Bumi or Mother Earth in the form of Kamadenu, a holy cow, will again withdraw nutrients from the soil, saving the most of her children. The testament we are given shows that we stopped seeing great rulers like Priyavrata reigning for 1.1 billion years or Dhruva for 36,000 years. We will see cruel rulers like Vena, so spiritual and even physical happiness will be lost. But stay tuned for Light at the End of the Tunnel at the end of this video. 5. Srila Prabhupada brought back the name of Krishna to the West, writing 19 million words and inaugurated 108 temples up until his departure in 1977. His perception of government is still valid today, I quote his LA 1972 lecture. At the present moment, you go to hell, but you must pay tax. And we divide the tax amongst ourselves, offer fighting for declaring war, that's all. So now we are in a very, very deplorable condition. There are no good governments. Simply by changing so-called parties, the government cannot improve. But the government can improve with a Krishna conscious person becoming president. End quote. I now quote Prabhupada's prophecy of World War III, which he spoke during his morning walk in Mayapur in 1975. Pakistan will start the war with India, but the actual war will be between America and Russia, capitalist versus communist. Britishers are now finished. They have no importance. War means destruction of all cities. It will destroy the demonic civilization. Now the war is between people to people, nation to nation. They support with men and money, so therefore they are also killed by nature's law. Death will come. You cannot avoid it. Unless break the life, death cycle, that is. Honest people will take to the religious way of life. Preaching will be very nice after the war. End quote. At the end of each Brahma day, that's 4.32 billion years, there is a conflagration of the three worlds. So the moving and non-moving burn up for 36,000 human years, then flooded by another 36,000 years. But Krishna decides on specifics at any time. 6. In part 4, I mentioned atheist King Vina, but the light at the end of the tunnel. At that time, during the previous Manu, it was Krishna in the form of his son King Prutu, who brought everything back. This current seventh Manu, known as Satyavrata and Vaivishvata, started his reign some 120 million years ago. We shall see Krishna in his form of Kalki, too, as usual, but bring religion and spiritual happiness back. Between scriptures, even Kalki Purana, we get a picture of increasing degeneracy. So besides the many better yugas within each era, many cycles within a cycle, we will overall decline until Kalki comes to thwart the unrighteous kings. Only a very small percentage will still be pious, some still hiding in mountains, many enslaved, but all will be released, while the impostors will die by his sword. He will also have some battalion of friends, and if I recall correctly, it will all be over in three weeks. Certainly, World War Zero had 54 kings fight for just 18 days. I can reveal that the Bhavishya Mahapurana is the only one devoted to our future and that its real text is closely guarded by Brahmins, not to be lost by corruptive print. Yes, the existing perusals have good insight but are not to be confused with the real copies. So when I say the excellent English printed copies have interpolations, one must never forget the real Bhavishya Purana is not interpolated. The worst case of shooting from this is the again interpolated version of the Bhavishya Malika with Eastern teenagers watching it via YouTube are now acting like Christian Doomists, meaning those Indisnai people. In my research, I can specifically pinpoint that although extant copies have been traced to the medieval period, they do presently contain the bogus claim of a name resembling Jesus, I quote, born of a virgin, end quote. Its issue is down to the 1200s biblical era, starting with Latin, and that anything older, such as Septuagint Greek, Hebrew, or ancient Aramaic, never wrote virgin, they merely wrote young woman. And in those days, with their style, if they wanted to write virgin, they would have written young woman who has never been touched. 
The problem with this interpolation is still parroted by those following Elena Blavatsky research, for example, that even Krishna was born of a virgin mother. This is then tried to be construed that Krishna was more recent than Jesus, but the Sanskrit would have to say Kanya. Anyway, I quote, This is the age where everything said is held sacred, end quote, and maybe it will help at some point. But what we can conclude, what is best for Kali Yuga, to enable Krishna's name be known in every town and city, is to sing and dance the following simple mantra to purify the air, soil and minds. 